Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be opening up another Jackson's box. Um, I know exactly what's in this box because I'm going to be um, using this for an upcoming art workshop. So let's get opening this up and I'll show you a bit more about what I have. As you can see, I have actually um, bought now a bigger pad um, for my work that I'm going to try and do outside of my sketchbook. I know some of you have seen my um, A4 drawings which are on, on my wall and created from sketches in my sketchbook and I thought actually let's uh, get a bit braver and so I've ordered basically a A3 pad which hopefully I will start to work in soon. Anyway, that's not for now, but that's just in the order so you know what's there. So the important thing is in this little box here, and what I have are four little tubes of Artist Watercolour and these are by Jackson's, so they're Jackson's own brand. I haven't used them before but I wanted to give them a little test and I thought they would be perfect to use for the upcoming workshop that I'm doing um, and I'll explain a bit more about that but um, I thought it would be really great to test these out and see how they work. The other thing that I've got in the box isn't Karen Dash as it says. These are oil based um, black pencils that I really wanted to try out because they apparently are waterproof and but they have a nice soft texture to them. So I'm going to try these out as well and see how they work alongside the watercolours. So, I'm really excited to try these out and see how they work. Um, the workshop that I'm going to be doing um, is going to be in a garden called Heligan's Garden and we're basically going to be spending a couple of hours looking at the garden so capturing different aspects of it and we're going to be sketching it and I'm going to take a very small group although I think there's about 12 people in the group but they're each going to have a little um, palette of paint um, which will have the main colours will be the red, yellow and the blue and I'm going to be using these just to top up because I've had these a number of, well I've had them a couple of years now and so I just top them up every now and again but the main colours that we use are the red, yellow and the blue um, and you see also that I've got a Payne's Grey so I'm going to put that in as well so they have one of those palettes they get given a sketchbook and also then a brush, water brush pen which will obviously be used with the paints. We give them a fine liner and also um, an eco line brush pen and this is again is really handy for just adding some shading or depth to the picture that they draw. So today though I am going to test these out and swatch them. I'm going to swatch them as they are and then what I'm going to do is mix up some greens from them because in our workshop we will be basically drawing a lot of green things. The 
colour is actually Jackson's Red and I love how bright and vibrant it is. As you can see it's really nice and bright and it's got good coverage. I add a bit more water to dilute it down here. She then looks a lot cooler in colour. Try this yellow. This is a lovely bright yellow. Really nice coverage. This is a little cadmium yellow light. I like how they've swatched the colour actually on the tube itself. And then the, the blue that I chose was an ultramarine light. Again, it's nice, bright. Bright blue. Add a bit more water. And the final colour or swatch then is the Payne's Grey. Very bluey grey. So there we go, the swatching has been done of the colours without any mixing straight out of the tube. So far so good. So my next plan now is to mix up as a few different greens, see what kind of greens we can get from these primary colours. So I'm going to start by just taking some of the yellow into another section. I'm just going to take a tiny bit of the blue. So we've got quite a um, bright base. We just take a little bit more. That's quite a nice light green. I'm going to take some of this light green. I'm going to add a little bit more blue to it. I'm going to take some of that green and I'm going to add another bit of blue to it. So we'll get a, quite a range going from light to dark.
So that's just using the yellow and the blue. Okay, so I'm going to take now this light green that we mixed up. This time I want to add just a teeny tiny bit of red to it. I'm going to take this green now and add a tiny bit of red to that. So we start to get more of a olivey, olive, browny, green. A bit more blue. Kind of like a grey green now. We also have these pencils and I would really like to use these in my sketchbook and combine with the watercolours and see how they work together. So as you can see I've had a little play with my primary colours and from just using the red, the blue and the yellow I've got this little green colour palette. So it's quite amazing how many greens you can get. And I've also got the Payne's Grey and I haven't mixed that in yet to the greens, but I'll probably do that as I go along. Um, and that grey grey will, will give me, again, some deeper greens. So it's quite amazing how many different greens you can get from just your three primary colours. And that's one of the things I will be doing in my workshop at the start. We will be mixing some greens together and I think that will be really nice and inspiring for the group that they will see that they don't, they don't need to buy in greens, they can just mix them themselves and you get a lot more satisfaction I think when you mix your greens together and you can control um, the shades as well. I'm now going to fill these pages with um, some green based sketches. I'm going to use um, some older sketchbook work so you can see here that um, I studied some flowers and plants so I might bring some of those into my sketches but I'm also going to use this sketchbook which has um, my drawings I did at Heligan's Garden about two years ago so it's really nice to actually have this reference because it means that I can draw from my sketches rather than just from photographs so in the garden there is like a big giant's head which I found quite funny there's also like the sleeping um, mud maid again quite an unusual garden feature um, there was apple orchards and uh, all sorts of things. I also spent some time in the potting shed and drew all of the um, old tools that were stored there. So I'm going to use that as well for my inspiration. Um, oh, and these were also drawn whilst I was at Heligan. So there was a beautiful wisteria uh, tree gnarly, very gnarly and kind of like overgrown and it was really really beautiful to see and then you've got loads of um, pots and plants and some older buildings and trees so again I'm going to use this as my inspiration to draw on for my sketches now and this one actually was just a simple black and white drawing of all of the cactus cacti and succulent. So as you can see I've got lots of things to draw on and I'm going to um, take some time now to do that.
So now I've put some of the main shapes down and also picked out some of those distinguishing features that you have on palms. So I'm now going to actually try these um, Faber-Castell pit um, pencils and see how we get on with that. I'm going to just add a little bit of detail on top. really go on really well actually really smooth it's not um <laughs> doesn't seem to be you know sticking or Yeah, it's not pulling at the page or buckling it. It's actually quite nice. Very smooth. These are really nice. I'm also going to just um, write with them. So yeah. I want to try also the reverse. So I'll try um, drawing with these and then adding the watercolour over the top to see how they, they work. But let me um, just give you a bit more of a close-up of this. So I quite like the giant's head, so I'm going to do that over here. I'm going to also draw a box for him to go into. Okay, so very simple line work and let's see how the watercolour responds when I add it over the top. So let's do a
Okay, there we go. The as you can see, watercolor's gone over it. It um, kind of shows through. I think I probably would go back over the line, but actually, it doesn't like you know um, mask it, does it? it? You can still see the line, which is good. A little bit lighter but actually it does really well it doesn't smudge and it doesn't um, blend away so it's it actually is nice and because the line is kind of quite soft in comparison to say my um, fountain pen line it's actually nice to have a different line so it's good to actually to have that combination and I think together you know with my fountain pen and this kind of pencil. It'd be nice to have it just in my kit. So I think that actually that really works quite well. I'm going to now just continue um, creating more sketches and fill up this page and I'll show you the results in a few minutes. So here we go, here's my finished um, sketchbook spread where I've just used the primary colours mixing them to make a range of different greens and you can see that I've also added um, so a few bit more terracotta colours and then also a little bit of purpley colours but they're all made from just those three colours and then also my Payne's grey so it's uh, a lot of fun actually to just experiment and just use three colours rather than, um, you know, have a huge selection and that really does help actually, especially if you're um, sketching quickly and you don't really want to waste a lot of time having to choose um, a whole load of colours to use. So there we have it, it's just a very quick and simple way to do a sketchbook spread and what's been really nice is actually to go back into my old sketchbooks and remind myself of what I um, saw and what I could draw. So I hope you just enjoyed that. It's just a few little tips that I teach in my workshops and um, will hopefully inspire you to continue sketching and trying out different things in your sketchbook. Thanks guys for watching and I'll speak to you again very soon. These are great. Brilliant.